Hello and welcome to SourceCAD. In this video, I'll tell you about making dimensioning in this drawing. And in this case, we'll use this simple drawing. You can download it from the link in the description. So let's get started. Now, before we start, I once again want to remind you that you can try the free trial version of BricsCAD using the link in the description. So go ahead, give it a try. The dimensioning tool in BricsCAD is on annotation panel of home tab. So right here we have the dimensioning tool and also we have the tool on the annotate tab. So right here on the annotate tab, you're gonna see these tools here, the dimension tools. So you can use these tools either from the dimension panel or you can also use it from the home tab, annotation panel. Now the first tool that I'll use here is dimension. Now using this single tool, you can add almost every kind of dimension in BricsCAD. Now to explain this, I'm gonna now move my cursor close to one of these arcs. And if I hover my cursor, look at this, it will automatically change the cursor to pick box. Now all I need to do is just click and click again to place the dimension. Now. Let's do it again for this circle. And I'm gonna click here and again, another dimension. Now in this case, both the dimensions are diameters. As you can see here, we have the phi symbol, but you can change it to radius as well. And for that, all you need to do is just select the radius option from this dim panel. Select radius and now select the circle. So I'm gonna select this circle and I'll click here and that's our radius value. So now R is prefixed before the value. You can also add other kind of dimensions here. For example, now if you want to add linear dimensions, you can do that as well. So I'm gonna now click here and look at this. I'll just let go my cursor and we'll have this linear dimension. You can also add the vertical dimension in a similar way. So you can either click on the line or you can also select the starting and end points. So all you need to do is just hover your cursor close to the points and again close to the points and there we have it. If you want to add angular dimensions then you can select that from dim panel as well. So here in the dim panel we have this angular option. I'll select it now you need to specify two lines. I'm gonna select these two and now specify the point where you want to place it. Here or maybe here or even in some other direction if you want. But in this case, I want to place it just here. So I'm gonna click and here we have the dimension. Now I'll press escape and I'll select these dimensions and I'll delete them. Now let's see how the same set of dimensions can be added using the normal dimensioning tools. So we have the tools here, linear, aligned, rotated, and so on. And the same set of tools are available on the annotate panel as well. So this is the dimension tool, which we just now explored. And the other tools are linear, aligned, baseline, circle, and so on. So let's add a couple of dimensions using these tools. So I'm gonna go to linear now, and this will help you in adding either horizontal or vertical dimensions. So I'm gonna add my very first dimension right here. Okay, that's our linear dimension. Now for the aligned one, I'm gonna select aligned and this will help you in adding this kind of aligned dimension. And here we have the aligned dimension, which is actually parallel to the line which we selected here. Then we have the baseline continue and ordinate dimensioning. Now to understand this, I'm gonna first delete these two dimensions and I'll move this complete drawing on origin. So I'm gonna select it all. I'll go to home, move, and now I'll move this point, the intersection of these two right here, and I'll move it on origin, which is zero, comma zero. Now, if for some reason you are not able to add the zero comma zero right here on the command line, then you need to deactivate the dynamic input mode. Right now, my dynamic input mode is off and you can deactivate it using this DYN toggle on the status bar. So it should be off if you want to add the coordinate values directly. So it's off now. I'm going to press enter 
and our drawing is now on the origin the point which we selected is on origin now let's begin adding the dimensions but before that we need to make some construction lines so I'm gonna go to line I'll start from this point and I'll track this point like this then I'm gonna click here and I'll change the line type of these two lines so I'll select these two and here from the property panel I'll just go to this line type option and I'll change it to ACAD ISO this and dash line type and maybe we'll just change the scale as well to 0.5 yep that should work and I'll press escape and here is the line type a different one all right now let's add the dimensions so once again I'll go to annotate and I'll select linear and I'll add the very first dimension here okay 92 now I'll go to baseline and I'll select continue now the continue dimension will allow you to continue from the last point so this was the last point for this dimension now I'm gonna click on the next point here then the next point and the next point all you need to do is just to specify the next point and the dimensions will be added like this now in this case the first dimension was this one and this was used as a reference and all the remaining dimensions were added with respect to the, that reference now let's talk about the baseline so I'm gonna select them all and I'll delete those dimensions I'll go to linear I'll add the very first dimension and as you can clearly see I need to add at least one dimension here before using the continue or baseline option because this dimension will become the reference so now I'll go to baseline and look at this in this case the dimension will start from this base point which was the first point for this dimensioning as well and once again we just need to click on the next points next points and the next point and the dimension will be added like this so in this case this is the baseline and all the dimensions will be measured from that baseline but we have a problem here the gap between these two dimensions it's kind of very small so you need to ensure that the gap is enough for your text so in this case we need to increase this gap so once again I'm gonna select these dimensions I'll delete it and now I'll modify this gap and you can do that using the dimension style so for that type D and press enter and this will open the drawing explorer and inside this explorer we have the dimension styles right here currently we are using ISO 25 dimension style and when you select that it's gonna show you all the properties of that dimension style if you want to make your own dimension style a completely new one you can do that using this option just click here and you'll have a completely new dimension style but in this case we are not going to do that maybe we'll do it in another video for now we'll just modify only the properties that we need to so here we have the dim baseline spacing option which is responsible for the gap between these dimension lines so I'm gonna change it to maybe six unit I'll press enter and we'll add the baseline dimension again so let's go to baseline right here we have the baseline I'll now select the dimension and in this case we need to select the dimension because we did not start it with a standalone dimension so we need to specify at least one existing dimension so I'm gonna click close to this point and now that will become the base point and now once again keep on clicking and you'll have your baseline dimensioning and the gap is also good in this case so that's our baseline dimensioning now let's talk about the last type of dimension which is ordinate so I'm gonna select them all and I'll delete it now the ordinate dimensioning is especially helpful where your drawing starts from origin in this case our drawing is starting from origin this is the origin point and you can use this ordinate option to specify X and Y coordinates so this is especially helpful where you want to specify the elevation of the drawings so one example is this I'm gonna now move it here and I'm gonna place my very first dimension here for the ordinate now this zero indicates the elevation of this point now if I select ordinate again and I select any other point maybe this center point now this will again show us the elevation or the height from this point so the height from this point to this point is 52.57 unit let's press enter or spacebar to repeat the last command and again I'm gonna select this point this point and we have another ordinate 
here it's 95 so this is the height from this point to this point in a similar way we can keep on clicking to add more and more ordinates like this so these are all height values now if you want to add the same set of values here in the x you can do that as well so i'm going to go to ordinate i'll click on this point and this is our zero point once again go to ordinate specify next point and this will be the distance from this point to this point so in this way you don't even need to add the simple linear or align dimensions and you can simply use the ordinates when you have a reference point like this and you can use it to keep your drawing clean and add the dimensions accordingly now there are also some other tools which we'll discuss here so one of the tool is the center mark select the center mark and simply select a circular object or an arc in this case I'm going to select this circle and you'll end up with this center mark so this is especially helpful if you want to add the references for the center marks similarly you can add the center line as well select center line and select the lines so I'm going to select these two line and look at this now we have the center line so one of the great thing about this center mark and center line tool is it's linked with its original drawing so if you move the circle if you just move it somewhere else it will take the centered mark as well as the center line with it in this case I'm gonna now change the angle of this line and look at this this will also change although this is not kind of practical in this particular situation but that's okay I just modified this drawing to explain the point here so I'm gonna press ctrl Z to get back to the original point and that's all about the basics of dimensioning in BricksCAD if you have any questions related to this video let me know in the comments below and as always thanks for watching